All right, so after a lot of people got online and said, hey, you know, the new Moon Knight came out. It's got a lot of SJW undertones in it. Wow, my video just got demonetized within the first 10 seconds. Um, they said you need to check it out. You need to read it, blah, blah, blah. So I did. I read it. And uh, I got to say that reading this book, it almost seems like it's making fun of SJW innuendos. Um, now, I'm going to go in that, into that in a second, but I read this book, and it's actually, it's kind of got my attention, you know, it seems like a pretty good book, um, but here's the thing, um, it's the writer that ruins it, because it, it's, you know, Twitter was a bad idea. <laughs> Twitter was a bad idea because all these pros get on here, and you find out how crazy they really are. Um, I read this book, and here's one of the phrases he says. Uh, basically, there's this bad guy called the Truth, and uh, he's basically a telepath, and he, he gets you through contact. And once he gets a hold of you, uh, it mutates your body, and it also mutates your mind, and you think what he's thinking, and you just keep ranting over and over like a rabid dog. Uh, so he touches this nice uh, little uh, New York City subway conductor, and he goes from, hey, how's it going, to humanity is perverse. Genocide is the uh, comeuppance we deserve. There is no creator un undebatable. Love is an, uh, a contravance undebatable. The White House is the Death Star. Twitter's a virus. And when the nukes raise everything, we know only a fool would claim it wasn't our destiny. So yeah, it, it gets a little gets a little rough here. Um, now the book itself has pretty decent art for a Marvel book because Marvel here recently has had terrible art, but this is pretty good. Um, the story is pretty good. We've got Moon Knight actually being Moon Knight and not just being crazy the entire time, which he is crazy. If you don't know who Moon Knight is, he's got he's a superhero that has multiple personality syndrome and he uses the multiple personalities to help him fight crime. Now, there is a lot of SJW stuff in this, though, because one of the personalities uh, of uh, Mr. Spectre, which is the Moon Knight, is a entrepreneur, uh, you know, a very wealthy and stylish investor, blah, blah. And it says he's narcissistic, but he's, it doesn't give any indication that he is. He helps a company make millions of dollars and then gives all of his uh, percentages to a uh, a program that he set up for the needy. So I mean, I, I don't understand. They said he's narcissistic in the book, but he doesn't display anything narcissistic other than dressing nice. So that made me feel a little weird. It's it's like, what are you saying about big business people? Because he's like the nicest guy I've ever seen in a comic book. Uh, so then another one of his personalities is, is a mean New York City cab, uh, cab driver that beats up on people. Apparently, he's done some pretty terrible things because once he shares what he's done to the bad guy, the bad guy freaks out to the point where he gives up. Um, and then you've also got this guy that is the embodiment of Ra, which is pretty much the opposite of the embodiment of the god that gives Moon Knight his, his powers. And uh, so now he's after Moon Knight. He wants to kill him. He calls him a Hebrew. He calls him a couple other things, which is another weird thing. Like He's, he's making fun of these people. Um, that, that technically he that the writer himself is a part of. We're going to go into that in just a minute. It's just, it's really strange. It's like, it, it's it's almost like there's a lot of self-awareness going on. It, it's like this guy is wearing a facade and he's doing it to uh, get people's attention or something. I don't really understand. Um, but anyway... Let's go into who who wrote this book. Uh, Max Bemis wrote this book, and uh, he is you're going you're going to be surprised, but he's the lead singer of a group called Say Anything. I don't know if you remember them from like you know the late nineties, early two thousand. Um, it's a it's 
technically a pop, punk, indie rock, emo band. Very popular in the early 2000s. Um, he's like 30-something years old now. Uh, so it's kind of weird to still be emo when you're like almost 40. But, you know, it's, it's, it's very odd. It's very odd. I keep looking into this. But now that you kind of know a little bit about him, he's written uh, quite a few things, though. He, you know, he had a musical career, and then all of a sudden he starts writing comics. It's kind of like when CM Punk started writing comics. And we know how well that went. Uh, now, as far as writing, he got into comics around 2013. He, he wrote a couple things for Boom Comics. Uh, he, uh, he, he, li he, write, he likes to write people with uh, personality disorders. I've noticed that. Uh, it might have something to do with him. Uh, and then he wrote an X-Men book. Um, he wrote uh, Cross Badlands, which somebody told me was a terrible book. Full Killer, he wrote that. Now, it got canceled, so I don't know how good that could have been. Um, but he's also wrote it, uh, he, he's also written uh, you know, a Centipede book. I don't know why they made a Centipede book from the Atari game for Dy Dynamite Entertainment. So he's just, I feel like he's using his name to go around these different companies to kind of get them to to let him write because it's very it's very weird. So then he, he writes this book, he writes Moon Knight, and everybody was saying, oh, it's SJW, it's SJW, and, and I'm just reading the clips that they're giving me before I read the book. And I was like, well, it seems to me like he's making fun of them. You know what I mean? It doesn't seem like he actually believes it. And then he had to go and start um, taking his uh, or, or take taking to Twitter and writing a couple things, and it really it's really bizarre. Uh, now, if you go to his Twitter here, let me pull this picture up. It uh, it ought to kind of tell you some things here. Uh, he also he, he wrote a couple other books that I'll tell you about in a minute, but. So he's got 63,000 followers on, on Twitter, which is pretty good. Uh, now, on his Twitter, it's just like all these other things, you know. That they like to use their job as power and influence to get followers, but then when you call them on it, you know, they're like, oh, this is my personal account, because if you go here, he's verified, of course. Uh, he's got Say Anything on his profile pic. He's got Moon Knight as the background. On his bio, it says, Music Say Anything, Two Tongues, Perma, Roy Records, Comics Currently, is Moon Knight. So he's already put Moon Knight at Marvel Comics and Centipede at Dynamite Entertainment. Uh, groupie Easily Dad. So he's Easily Dad? I don't, I don't understand. But um, so then you go to his actual, uh, is it going to let me flip? There we go. He starts talking about the book, and this is what I'm trying to show you here. The, his personality just flips back and forth because – let's read some of this stuff. He says, I understand not everyone will be able to laugh along to a Moon Knight comic, and I'm very grateful for every Moon Knight fan who is letting me play with the archetype. Okay. He says, trust me, being mentally ill is comedic. Hmm. So that makes me – leads me to believe that he may be mentally ill. Uh and then he says, as you've seen, the more levity, the more hell and blood and death will be bringing. Okay. <laughs> All right. And he says, all the kindness we've received so far about this run is and will always exceed my expectation. And I'll keep trying because Mark and you deserve it. He's talking about Mark Spector, the character. Thank you for reading, guys. I mean, he's very up and down. So then we shoot to this. Is a clip here where somebody's talking about that page that I was talking about on Moon Knight. And it says, the White House is the Death Star. Twitter is a virus. And this Larry guy says, accurate. Okay. And he retweets it and puts the words, the truth hurts. Hmm. So with one tweet, you've made me question your entire book. Now with that, I, ooh, I don't, I don't. This is weird. So we keep flipping, and a bomb drops. Okay. It says it's hilarious that there might be some reason, some reaction to the hundreds of men being called out for sexual harassment from crappy, uh, f wad alt right, you know, all that stuff. 
I was like, where did this come from? And then he keeps going. He says, these uh, profanity word want to act like women haven't been raped for thousands of years since the dawn of man. What is he talking about? Is he like trying to say that since these people are, are lefties that it shouldn't be that big of a deal that they're raping, raping people? What does this got to do with Moon Knight? And then he start, He uses the same word again. Similar uh, CFs act like the term racism even existed before this century. What? This is just really weird. This is getting strange. And then here we go. By the way, if you're looking for SJW undertones in Moon Knight, they're not there. That being said, I effing hate you personally. Okay. That really makes me want to buy your Moon Knight book. I mean, this is a comic book, and this is the person writing this comic book. Is he supposed to be like, I know that Marvel is getting to this thing where they're hiring people that are just like the book, like, you know, they have to hire a Muslim girl to do uh, Camilla Khan. They have to hire a fake Puerto Rican to write uh, a fake Puerto Rican, America uh, Sanchez or whatever her name is, Chavez. Um and then, you know, they're, they're trying to say now that uh, Riri Williams has got to be written by a black girl that looks just like her. Does that mean now that they're going to try to get uh, mentally ill people to write mentally ill characters on the books? Because this is kind of what it seems like to me, guys. This is very, very strange. I don't really know what to do with this information. But he also uh, wrote another book, and it was called Evil Empire. So I'm going to pull up that picture real quick to look at it. Yeah. This is the kind of covers that we're dealing with here. We're just going to keep going here. Look at some of these other covers. But it almost seems like he's doing this on purpose. Some of these covers are very strange. It falls in that same uh, fight the man, fight the power kind of uh, emo punk mess. And it's, it's very awkward and it's off-putting and it's not very funny. Um, th these... SJW types like this seem to have a deal where they think that being vulgar is funny and, and being overly vulgar as a casual deal is funny. And it's not. It just makes you seem crazy. And after reading these tweets, it's very, very strange. I don't really know what to do with this information because I, for one, like the book. I'm very interested in reading the next book, but this kind of stuff right here just worries me. Like, C.B. Sobolski has is, is just now got in there, you know, he doesn't really have anything to do with these books that have come out here lately. It's going to take about six months for him to be able to uh, do anything with it. C.B. Sobolski is the new editor-in-chief over at Marvel after he got rid of Alex Alonzo, for, or Axel Alonzo, I mean, for driving their sales into the gutter. So they're hoping that this guy that uh, uh, started marketing things like that in, in China for Marvel can, can bring things up because he's an actual comic book fan. He seems like a nice guy. And he's not an SJW as far as we can tell. But once he gets in there and starts doing some things, he really needs to get a hold of these writers because th this is out of control. When you can go on a Twitter like, let's say like what, what we did. We read the book and we say, hey, this guy seems pretty cool. Let me go to my Twitter and pull him up. Oh, oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, not buying any more of those books. And people say, well, you're overreacting, but that's all we have to go on. Why would I read something? Why would I go out of my way to add another book to my pull list when it's these kind of crazy people writing these books? Get control of these writers. If you have to, delete their Twitter accounts, okay? It's not that – Twitter is not that big of a deal. Uh, would you rather make millions of dollars or you, would you rather them have a Twitter account? I mean, if they if they can't write coherent things on there, then get rid of it. But at the same time, it almost seems like a put on. Like if you've seen any of, any of his music, it was always very over the top and things like. And it, it's almost like he's doing it for shock value, and it seems like that's what he's going for here. So I I don't know. I I may call shenanigans on this. I don't believe that this guy's. I believe he's doing it on purpose. I believe he knows what he's doing. He's trying to get attention. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got to say about this. It's just very strange, very awkward, very off-putting, especially after I liked the book. You know, the last run of Moon Knight was stupid. I didn't like it because I knew it was going to end up being a fantasy. At the same time, he didn't wear his costume, and the costume is my favorite part. So 
Why do I want to see a guy in a white suit with a mask over his head? I want to see the whole Moon Knight outfit. So this new run looks pretty good, but this is very strange. Very strange, guys. But uh, anyway, i got a nice little outro for you here, so uh, make sure you stay on for that. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, be sure to go to my Patreon if you if you would like to and support me. Uh, anything will help. But all right, guys, that's all i got to say. It's just very, very awkward. I don't know what to do. All right, guys, Underground Geek out. touched herself she touched herself she touched herself